good morning, everybody. It's good to see you, see you out with us today, and welcome to people watching on the live stream. And, uh, I haven't got any announcements. Has anybody uh, got a report on Roland? Do you know how Roland's? No, I haven't heard, heard anything on him lately either. So uh, just continue to remember that family in your prayers. And also, uh, the Page baby, remember them. Miss Irene, Irene Speed, I ask you to remember her also in prayer. Anybody else have any prayer requests that we need to be known? Because I know we ain't got a prayer list going around right now. Yeah, yeah Milton Brown had shoulder surgery, so remember him. Uh, Shane said he's doing good, though. He's, uh, uh, doing good, so. Anybody else? Uh, Do we have any birthdays this past week? Down here, Teresa. Any more? Jeff and Tim, Houston. Yeah, both several birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Any anniversaries? I'd like to sing in the choir, come on up, and we're going to sing out a song of faith this morning. Uh, welcome. Everybody would like to come on up, come on. Please, come on. <laughs>
106.
Anybody have a song they'd like to sing this morning? Or not? And we'll turn it over to the pastor. Well, I'm thankful to be here today and thankful to see everyone that's come out to be with us. Good crowd here. And we appreciate you being here. Uh, just thank the Lord for you. Appreciate all of you that are watching at home. Um, just pray that, that God's will be done in all of our lives and that we will look to Him because that's where our strength is. And, you know, I've said this a lot of times, uh, God, God didn't just put us down here in this world not to be able to find our way through. He's given us His Word and the Holy Spirit that will guide us if we will just only listen to it. And that, you know, seems to be the problem with the whole world. Don't seem like uh, people want to listen to the Word of God. But God's got so much for us if we will just open our hearts up and allow Him into our hearts and in our lives and to guide us through this world. A lot of blessings if we would just trust in Him. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 11. And got a few verses here that I want to talk to you about. And I um, want to talk to you today about two invitations. Uh, one now, and then there's one in, in Revelation. Many, many throughout the, the Bible. But this is one of the first that Jesus gave one of the first invitations. And then there's going to be the last one. And as we look at our lives, and, and you know, as I've said many times, nobody knows your life any better than you and God. And God knows exactly what we stand in need of. There's, there's so much pressure on people's lives. Um, I was talking to Brian a minute ago. And, and it seems like we're living in, in an instant world. Nobody has any patience anymore. Uh, everything needs to be right now, right now. Um, we're live, we've been spoiled, really, is what's, what's wrong with America today. But God has blessed us in abundance. And we need to look at what He says. Now, as I said a minute ago, we need to open our hearts up, open up our spirit and allow God to come in and speak to us. And, and He'll do that if we will just do what He says, humble ourselves before Him. And, and I want to tell you something. If you're lost, God's got salvation for you. If you're saved, God's got blessings for you. But what we've got to do is just to open ourselves up to Him and allow Him to come in. So many times we put up a shield uh, to try to keep the Spirit of God out. And God is the best thing that will ever happen to our lives. Amen. If we will only just allow Him to come in and guide us. I don't know what it is about us. Um, I've, I've, my boys and my grandkids all, when they first little, want to drive. And you know how it is. They get a hold of the steering wheel and and most of the time you're holding the steering, they got their little hands on the steering wheel. And most of the time you got your hand under the steering wheel, really a guiding it. Yeah. And, and they think they're guiding it. And then when they realize that your hand's on it, they want to move your hand off of it. And, and I've, I've been there and you have too. And uh, then you've got to just, you know, have your foot right on the brake because you know good and well when they pull their hand off, they're going to go in the ditch. So what about our lives? You know, we're the same way with God. God's trying to guide our life and trying to show us the way to go. And, and we're wanting hold of the steering wheel of life and God's guiding it. And then after a while, we fight it so long, God just gives it to us and we run into the ditch or into troubles. Now, this invitation here that God's talking about is found in, in Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28, 29, and 30. And I, I want you to listen to this. Now, right before this, Jesus had preached and, 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 and tried 
to, to give the people salvation and, and all of these things that these uh, verses are talking about. And all they did was rejected. They rejected what Jesus was trying to offer to them. And listen, let me jump back over in verse uh, 20 and read you some of that and show you, first of all, what he was offering to them. The same thing that God is offering to us today. The very same thing he is offering to us today. He's given the invitation to crying out and saying, Come, come to me, come to me. And, and that's what Jesus was offering here to these people. And, and after he offered it to him, I, uh, the world, I know his heart was broken because listen to what he said. Verse 20. Then began he to upbraid uh, the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. And, and he was really chastising them heavily there because he could see what, uh, what he was offering to these people and, and they did not want that or could not see, would not open up their hearts enough to allow uh, Jesus uh, uh, to, to get in their hearts and to guide them. And listen to what he says. Woe unto thee, uh, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethesite. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre, Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell, for if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in Sodom, it would have remained in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for that land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth, no, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and whosoever the Son will reveal him. Now what Jesus was saying, all these people that, that Jesus had healed, uh, all the people that, that had turned to him and all the great things he'd done, and they saw all these miracles that Jesus done, and they had to know that He was the Son of God, and now He was offering to them salvation, peace uh, to their hearts, and they said no. Now where is the world at today? The same Son of God, the same one that did all these miracles, the same one uh, that has done everything else, and, and he is still offering uh, these great blessings to this world. Now, the Word of God said that if any man, if, if anyone on the face of this earth uh, would come and ask for salvation, that God would give it to him. And then, we look here in verse 28. I want you to look at that and look at what uh, the, this invitation that God is giving to the whole world. Now how many of us here today uh, are stressed out? How many of us just don't have peace? How many of us today that, that really uh, if, if something happened in our lives that cancer or some bad disease and a doctor said okay uh, according to uh, what he saw you wouldn't have but a month to live. How many of us would not be for sure about our salvation? How many of us would say, well, I, I just, I, I don't know where I'm going to spend eternity. Well, I want to tell you something. 
The God that I'm talking about today is offering to us. Uh, uh, let, me, let me just show you what he is offering to us today. And people, we don't have to go through life until we think it's about over with and make things right with God. We can make things right with God today. And listen to what he said. He's given an invitation here to come to the whole world. To every single one of us here today, God is giving you an invitation. And listen to what it's to. Come unto me. All you that are labor, that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, uh, look up the word rest. The definition of rest is relief from anything. Relief from anything. Now think about this. Think about what God is saying to us. He's saying to you, I'll give you rest. How many of us go through life just fretting and worrying and and, and just afraid. Uh, we're afraid of this and we're afraid of that. We're worried about this and we're worried about that. But how many of us will do what God says? How many of us will come to God and take our need to the one that can do something about it? How many of us today, uh, somebody has uh, said or done or acted some way toward us and, and it's hurt our feelings and and we don't know what to do, and, and we would like to change them, I want to tell you something. Now listen, if you had not figured this out in life, you can't change nobody. You can't do it. But I want to tell you something. God can. God can. God can change them. Okay, now how can we get them changed? By taking them. If this, if this is them, we take that to God and we believe that God can do it and we take them to God and put it in the hands of God and leave it there. Right. And then, after we leave it in the hands of God, we go on to serving God and living for God and believing that God is going to take care of this. Amen. Whatever the problem is. Whatever the need is. But how many of us do this? This is our problem. We take it to God. Say, Lord, I'm giving it to you. And before we even get out of the altar, we pick it back up and take it back with us. Amen? Well, listen to what God says. Now, this is an invitation to everybody on the face of this earth. Everyone on the face of this earth, Jesus is saying, but you've got to believe You've got to believe that, that He is the Son of God. Amen. That this is the Word of God. I believe it. I believe every word in it. I believe what it says. I believe that He, that he was in heaven with God before He came to this earth. I believe that He come and was born of a virgin. Now the world is getting away from that, but that's what the Word of God says and I believe it. Amen. And I believe that that uh, he went to the cross and gave his life there for my sins. Amen. And I believe this promise here is to all. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest. Relief from anything distressing. Anything. From anything distressing Annoy, annoying, tiring, and listen to this. Do we all not need this? Peace of mind. That's right. Now listen, this is what God is offering to you today. If I had a million dollars, which I ain't got a million dollars, but if I had a million dollars here in my pocket today and I said listen I've got a million dollars here and I'm going to give it to the first one that makes it up here while people would jump up if they knew for a fact that they could get that million dollars and no strange attacks people would just be a running to try to get that million dollars 
Well, I'm going to tell you something. This right here is worth more than any money on the face of this earth. All the gold and all the treasures and everything else. A peace of mind. A million dollars wouldn't give us a peace of mind even though the flesh thinks it would. Now God is offering to us today these things, but how many of us is going to take our troubles to God and leave it with God? Or are we going to, uh, in a message like this, get enough faith up that we, we can get nearer, nearer to the altar, but boy, we just want to grab it and run back and hang on to it. Uh, but, but God is promised. This is a promise of God. And God cannot lie. Listen to what he says. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will, not maybe, but I will give you rest. Rest. Take my yoke. Now this is the one that we don't want. We don't want to be yoked up. I thought the same thing when I got saved. I thought that whenever I was called to preach. I, I just don't want to be yoked up. I thought that, I, that that was the devil fighting. You don't want to be yoked up with Jesus. You don't want to be tied to this word. That's the thought of the flesh and what the world is seeing. You don't want to be tied down uh, to this. You don't want to be a prisoner to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you something. That soul that is inside you will never find peace, never find rest, until you fully get yoked up with Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what they used to do with steers years ago? They'd pull logs, they'd plow fields, but they had a yoke. And they would put that yoke on these steers. And they would have to work together. They were tied together with that yoke. And what God is telling me and you is that we need to come. The invitation is to us. How many of us today has got saved? And that's as far as we ever went. We got saved. And then we've just been kicking against the yoke all of our lives. The only peace for your soul is to yield ourselves to Jesus Christ. And, and listen, listen to what he says. Take my yoke. Invitation, come. Come to me. I'll give you rest. And then this is a choice. Do I take that yoke? Do I yield myself to him and get yoked up with him? Or do I just say, well, no, I want salvation. I want to go to heaven. But I sure don't want to walk it while I'm here. That's what the flesh does. But how many of us is willing? How many of us is willing today to just come to God, humble ourselves before Him, and say, yes, God, I am Yours. I am willing to follow what You say. Because, God, I've tried the world. And, folks, I did. I tried the world. But there's no real inward peace. There's a high here and a high there, but I'm talking about day in and day out. How many of us today, let's face it, let's, and, and, and listen, if you don't face it and realize where you're at, you're going to live the rest of your life in misery. How many of us today do not have that peace in our minds? I'm talking about the peace to know that we're walking. You know where that peace is when you get yoked up with Jesus? You know that you're walking in the will of God. You know that, that God is going to be with you in everything, every part of your life. I told uh, Clarence uh, this morning, uh, he was telling me something about a truck, and I, he said, I, I hate to break the news to you. I said, Clarence, I said, I'm about like an old mule, just broke and, and, and just traveling on down this road, and when them boogers jumps out at me, I used to have a horse that, buddy, you better hang on. Uh, he was riding down the road and something jump out and he just about run out money. Uh, I said, I'm about broke. And that's the way we need to be with Jesus because we need to trust in Him and know that if, if the biggest storm comes up through the Gulf and comes on up through here, 
that God is going to be with us. Storms of life, whatever, that God's going to be with us. As I walk through this world that I cannot see the next second or millisecond in my life, I want to know who's holding my hand. And God's given all of us an invitation. God don't, you know, we, we go and uh, we see a bunch of puppies. If, if a dog's got uh, six or eight puppies and we're going to get one of the puppies and, and we look in there, we, we'll pick the prettiest puppy out. And that's the one we want. God don't look down here upon this world and say, I'm looking at all of these people and I'm just going to pick the prettiest one out and, and this is the one that I'm going to take care of. No. God looks down here and He offers to the whole world. He says, come unto me. You come unto me and listen to what He's promised you. He, he's promised you yoke or, or rest. Then He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. God's saying learn of me. Learn about me. Learn what's going to bring you that, that peace. Mark this in your Bibles people. Study this. And listen today to the Holy Spirit that is looking into your heart, into your life. And you realize this. Do you have a peace of mind? Do you have rest to your soul? If not, why don't you do this today? Why don't you commit your life to come and yoke up with God and let God be number one in your life? Now, I want to ask you this. When you get up in the morning, what's number one in your life? A cup of coffee? Turn TV on? Or to be reading the Bible? It ought to be God. It ought to be a talking to God when you wake up. Then as we go on down, and he said, Learn of me, for I am meek. Meek, patient, and kind. Learn of me, Jesus is saying. Now he's saying, Come to me. And he said, These things I want you to do. And he said, I've got some blessings for you if you'll only come to me. But he's He's saying, these are the things that you've got to do. You've got to come to me. Because I've got something wonderful for you. And how many of us is just going to sort of stand off, say no, no, no? Well, let me tell you, you're not going to be blessed. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I am meek and lowly and hard. He said, I'm gentle. And he said, I'm meek. And he said, and ye shall. Now this is a promise of God Himself. Yeah. God said, if you will come unto Him, you shall find rest unto your soul. God has promised you rest to your soul. And then He goes on and He says this. Because He knew how weak this flesh was. He knew how that the world would be pulling at us all the time. He says, my yoke is easy. He said, it's not as hard as you think it is. He said, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. One of the first invitations there that Jesus gave. And let me read to you the last one. And people today, I want you to do this. I want you to listen to God. And I want you to listen to the Spirit of God. And if God draws you to this altar today, God's got something for you. Do you have a peace of mind? Do you have peace in your heart? Do you know without a doubt that God is walking with you and holding your hand? Well, let me tell you something. You can know that today by coming to Him. And listen here in Revelation, in the last chapter of Revelation, and the Spirit and the Bride say come. The invitation's going out again. The first invitation Jesus gave was that that I read to you. And this is the last. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Let him that heareth say come. Let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will let him Take the water of life free.
And what will you do? What will you do today with this invitation that God is giving to you? Church today, you here at the church, folks, you at home, what will you do with this invitation? How many times has God come to your door and knocked at your heart? How many times? As, as Jesus had offered all of this to the people, and then He gave them a warning because they would not come and would not accept what He had. Now God is offering to you something here today. As He searches all of our hearts, all of you at home searching your hearts, God is offering. Now what are you going to do with this invitation? You've got a need? There's a need in your life? Here's your need. Are you just going to cover it up and keep it? Or are you going to bring it to God? Give it to God? Get yoked up with Him? Go on and live your life and serve God? And leave that with God and leave it in the hands of God and allow God to take care of your needs. I'm going to ask you to stand. God is giving you an Im invitation right now. God is telling us to come. Come. So what about it here today? Will you come? Will you bring your needs to Him here today? What about it? Will you? What about it today as God speaks? Come on right now as the Holy Spirit knocks at your door. Don't tell God no. Will you come? Will you? You know, we ought not to be ashamed if God speaks to us. We ought to, we ought to just say, thank you, Lord, that you're trying to show me. He's yoked up. He's asking us to get yoked up with Him here today. And God's able to meet our needs. So right now, if there is another one anywhere that God has spoke to, why don't you step out and come? Will you bow your heads right now, will you? I ask you to pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit will have His way in all of our hearts. So right now, if there's another one, God bless you that have come. If there's others, come on right now. We'll pray in a minute. Will you? Maybe there's something in your life that you want God to take care of. Why don't you step out and bring it to Him right now? Will you? Come on, right now, God's speaking. There's needs. And He's speaking to your heart. Would you come right now? There's others still coming. Come on, right now. God's speaking to you. Will you come? We're going to pray with these just in a minute. If there's any others. I want us all to pray. You at home pray. We're going to pray for every need of every person that has come before the Lord today. Our Father, we humbly bow before you, thanking you, God, for your word, and asking you, Father, as we come, and Lord, you look into our hearts. God, you know our needs. Father, I pray that you'd give us all the faith to cry out to you and tell you our needs. Father, we do need peace. And God, we need peace of mind. Father, we do desire to be yoked up with you because, God, I know that if we're with you, we're in, uh, we have that peace. So, Lord, help your children as we come to you today to meet our needs. And, Father, if there's any that's lost, I pray that they'd ask you, God, into their heart and to forgive them of their sins, and you promised that you would. So thank you today for your word. Thank you for everyone that has come. And thank you for answering every prayer that you've answered today. So we ask your blessings upon all of us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I appreciate everybody coming today. Appreciate you at home listening. And pray for our service Wednesday night. Ask the deacons to go ahead and get the doors opened up. And uh, you'll be free to go. So thank you again for coming. Appreciate every one of you.